and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, EFCC arraigns former head of service Steve Oronsai over alleged fraud as court grants him bail in the sum of 10 million naira. Court upholds objection to Ricky Tarfa's rights enforcement suit, asks the senior advocate to face criminal charge against him. President Buhari returns from Equatorial Guinea, vows to deal with perpetrators of violence in River State. And UNICEF raises alarm over severe malnutrition in Zimbabwe, says about 33,000 children at risk. All for sectoral deregulation and transparent allocation of foreign exchange to marketers. And in sports news tonight, at the ongoing African Boxing Championship, Nigeria's gold medal prospect Efe Tobo loses in the final of the men's 91 kilogram category. I'm Yemisi Paya and from Abuja, Senate throws out bill on the empowerment of women, saying the document contravenes the 1999 constitution. service, Mr. Steve Oronsaye, who was arraigned today at the FCT High Court in Abuja, has been granted bail in the sum of 10 million naira and two sureties. Both sureties cannot be less than the rank of directors in the Federal Civil Service or in the alternative, retired directors who are residents of the Federal Capital Territory. The sureties are expected to provide evidence of the bail bond in the sum of 5 million naira each. Mr. Oronsaye had pleaded not guilty to a two-count charge of fraud and obtaining money under false pretenses. Meanwhile, a member of staff of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission told the court that Mr. Oronsaye allegedly diverted funds to a personal account with a commercial bank. Lagos has asked senior advocate of Nigeria, Ricky Tarfa, to defend the criminal charge against him before pursuing civil damages against the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The presiding judge, Justice Mohammed Idris, today upheld the EFCC's preliminary objection to Mr. Tarfa's 2.5 billion naira fundamental enforcement rights suit. The court ordered a stay of proceedings pending the conclusion of Mr. Tarfa's trial at the Lagos State High Court. Our judiciary correspondent, Shola Shoyeli, reports. Senior advocate of Nigeria, Ricky Tafa, was not in court today for the verdict in his fundamental rights enforcement suit. He had sued the EFCC for allegedly violating his rights after he was arrested on charges of obstructing the work of the commission and perverting the course of justice. Mr. Tafa demanded 2.5 billion naira as damages. He also sought an order of perpetual injunction restraining the anti-graft agency and its agents from further violating his rights. He also wanted a public apology as well as the release of his telephones and SUV which were seized by the EFCC. The EFCC, through their lawyer Wahab Shitu, however filed a notice of preliminary objection challenging the court's jurisdiction on the ground that Mr. Taffer's prayers following his arraignment on the charges at the Lagos State High Court had become academic and hypothetical. Mr. Shitu asked the court to decline jurisdiction in view of the pending criminal charge or in the alternative state proceedings pending the conclusion of the criminal case against the senior advocate. Justice Idris, however, dismissed the EFCC's objection challenging the jurisdiction of the court to entertain the matter. But he agreed with the commission when he held that it would be inelegant for him to make any orders that would undermine the authority of another court or coordinate jurisdiction or bring the judiciary to ridicule. He noted that unless he stays action, there's a real risk of serious prejudice which could lead to potential injustice for the EFCC. In the interest of justice, the judge ordered the stay of further proceedings in the civil suit pending the determination of the criminal proceedings before the Lagos State High Court. Counsel to Mr. Tafa, senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. George Ogunthadi, declined to comment on the matter. But counsel to the EFCC says it's a brave verdict. You see that is a vindication for the EFCC. It confirms the prosecutorial authority of the EFCC. 
it confirms the powers and autonomy of EFCC to act within the confines of the law. While the order to stay proceedings in this case subsists, Justice Idris says that the EFCC shall ensure respect for the fundamental rights and liberties of Mr. Ricky Tafa SAN as guaranteed by law, including the right to have the criminal charge prosecuted expeditiously. Shola Sheeli, Channels Television News. New figures by the National Bureau of Statistics show that Nigeria's headline inflation for February jumped 2.6% to 11.4% month-on-month. Consumer inflation was reported at 9.6% in January, already outside the threshold set for the monetary policy considerations by the central bank. Ahead of the release, inflation estimates for February have been put at between 9.7% and 10.1%. According to the data, the food sub-index moved up 1.4% month-on-month to 11.3%. Urban inflation climbed 3% to 12.3% and rural inflation reported higher at 10.7%, advancing 1.8% last month. So, how does all this affect the consumer? For more on the current inflation figures, I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by the Managing Director of Financial Derivatives, Mr. Bismarck Rewani. Thank you so much, Mr. Rewani, for joining us on the news at 10. Thank you. I remember you predicting this would happen. I mean, yes. the last time we sat down and had a chat about it. Yeah. But did you think it would be this high? No. The reality, let's explain what has happened. Headline inflation is 11.4%. This is the highest spike in inflation in the last seven years. And basically, it is the highest level in nominal inflation since December 2012. Typically, inflation goes up by about 0.1% every month. Last year, it went up eight times at point average of 0.1 or 0.2%. But this time, it's up by 270 basis points, which is significant. The question is why? Now, Nigeria is one of the 10 countries with the highest inflation rate in Africa. Why did it happen? It happened because on... February 11, the exchange rate moved from 315 to as high as 405 in that segment. So we had the exchange rate depreciate sharply from February 11 to February 29. And this is a measure of prices in that month of February. And inflation is defined as persistent increase in price level. So what does this mean to the ordinary man on the street? First and foremost, the food basket increased by 11.3%, while the non-food went up by 11%. Urban inflation, 12.3%, and rural inflation, 107 Why? Because the price of diesel had gone up from 107 to 134 You'd move goods with diesel. The, the, the thing is that we have paid the price of a devaluation without actually getting the benefits of a devaluation. So what has happened? Let us take beans, for example. It went up by 53.8%. Beans is inelastic because you use it for moi moi for akara and it's, there's no substitute for it flour wheat flour went up by 20 percent it's partly elastic but the price of bread has also gone up by almost 30 percent yeah we see flour, rice as well yes flour is now going at 9,300 per bag rice it's incredible that's gone up by 42.1 percent palm oil has gone up and that increased the price of indomie tomatoes are the only one that has come down because of the seasonality so in terms of prices going up yes. and salaries remaining where they yeah, were. Yeah. How is the average Nigerian expected to cope? So effectively, yeah. inflation eats into your income and your disposable income and you have to make decisions about what you are going to give up. But one of, there are four reasons why inflation spiked in February. One, forex pressures. People were not clear. There was no clarity, no certainty and no credibility about the foreign exchange policy of the country. So people were buying out of pressure and anticipation. There were shortages because of some items that were banned. There was speculation. Some people took advantage of this and the exchange rate went all the way to 405 and has come back to 325 because there was pre resistance from the market. Transportation costs went up because there was fuel shortage. Some of these things are transient. So we expect that in March we will see some moderation of the inflation rate, but not enough to actually ameliorate the pain the financial pain and economic pain which the Nigerians are suffering. Now, let's compare ourselves to our peer countries. Ghana is a very good case. Ghana has actually adjusted their currency. They have dealt with their power supply. They have dealt also 
with uh, you know um, the currency situation right so when you so say they've adjusted their currency is that something that you 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 think we should do as well no it's 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 a package we'll come back to that but okay. the important thing is that Ghana has seen inflation come down from 20% to 18.5 Ghana has interest rates as high as 26% they have removed subsidies and the exchange rate is stable at about 3.89 so basically fuel currency and power have all been resolved in Ghana and Ghana's economy is 35 billion dollars one third the size of Lagos state's economy the other country is Angola. Angola has devalued three times, but it's enjoying a growth of 4.9%. Angola's inflation rate is 20.26. It has reduced subsidies, but its currency is going at about 448. An oil producing country under similar pressure. So what has happened? Nigeria has, not, Nigeria has defended its currency, has kept interest rates low, and Nigeria is enjoying a growth rate of 2.82. Inflation, when your growth rate is reducing, is what we call stagflation, and that's what you don't want. Angola is getting 4.9% growth and the currency is under pressure. The, all of this is because of exogenous variables. So what next? What next is that the budget will be passed this week, 2016 budget. The MPC meets on Monday. They have to decide. Right? Doing nothing is not an option. Mm. During the national debate which we had on the currency, I said that doing nothing would give you the outcome of fellas song called Palava. So you had currency Palava. Now, Exchange rate policy must be adopted, and finally, March inflation will moderate. So the picture looks good, but there's a lot of pressure. You are taking the pain for inflation, whilst you have taken the pain for a devaluation, while you are not getting the privilege and the benefit of it. So in you talked about no clarity about foreign exchange policy, and economists yes. like yourself have also talked about no clarity in terms of economic policy. So, what are you hoping to see in the next one month? Well, Nigeria. Doing nothing is not an option. The Nigerian policymaker has to differentiate between what is important and what is urgent. Important things can be postponed and can be delegated. Urgent things must be resolved immediately. And one thing you must notice is that any time you see a queue, it means the price of that product is, is, is not the right price. Nobody queues in front of the Rolls Royce shop. Nobody queues in front of a jewelry store. Nobody queue. People queue for petrol because the price is not right. Oh, right. People queue for foreign exchange because the price is not right. When the price is not right, you've got to adjust the price to get equilibrium. At that point, there'll be no distortion to economic activity. Managing Director of Financial Derivatives, Mr. Rabwane, always a pleasure to have you with us on the news at 10. Thank, Thank you. you. And in part two, after the break, President Buhari insists his administration's war against corruption will be relentless. That's in a moment. Good morning.